Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to go from a text prompt to generating an AI image to a PBR textured fully playable character in Unreal Engine in under 10 minutes. I'm going to be using this Hyperhuman Demos Rodin AI. Now this is relatively straightforward to use. For a cost purpose, you can get 10 credits to try right away. In my case, I've got a seven day free trial and it gives me 360 credits. And the costs vary from $24 up to $96 per month for a business account. If you look at some of the previous versions here, we've got a stack of characters and I'll show you some of mine and how easy it is to generate something with a texture and a mesh that can be exported. In this particular example, I've just written a text prompt here from mushroom headed cyborg armor muscular male character. I'm sure some of you could think of something better to put on here. You can also add an image input here combined with a text input for further training. Now once you've finally got it going, you can choose to you can choose some of these prompts here like game ready, complex geometry, smooth edges and so forth. I haven't seen a great deal of difference whenever I choose these, but I am going to go for a fusion mode here, which is some way between these two. And I have a slider to go and decide which one I want to be influenced by more. Let's do a redo here and see what happens. When I'm happy enough with what I have, I'm going to go into this hyper mode and choose 30,000 and click confirm, which uses one credit. Here we can get a first look at our geometry, which really doesn't look too bad. Then I'm going to generate a texture and we can choose from PBR temperature and reference strength here. Actually, in this case, the texture hasn't come out too badly. There's some areas here that can be improved on, but I'll show you how we might be able to deal with these later. Once I'm happy with this, I realize that I can't choose the high poly option or higher than 1K for my textures without having the business subscription. Nonetheless, I'm gonna go with FBX, 1K and PBR, and I'm gonna download my model. Now, once I have it unzipped, I can see that I have the base geometry and a bunch of textures ready to import into Unreal. There is actually an Unreal plugin directly for it, but it's about half a gig and I couldn't get it to work properly. So I'm just gonna show you how to create it manually. First though, we're gonna bring it into Blender and I'm gonna show you some of the things that you wanna, that you might wanna be able to do to this. I'm just gonna go import and I'm just gonna check the scale of it first. By pressing N key, I can bring this up and see the dimensions of my geometry. You can see that the height is 1.9. So I'm gonna scale this down slightly to make it 1.8 because we're going to be retargeting to the Unreal mannequin that's 1.8 meters tall. The next thing I'm gonna do is just press the G button and the Z button and just pop this down to the bottom, down to ground level. Now I can further examine this geometry quickly. If I press the tab button, I can once again look at that mesh in greater detail and see that the edge loops are nice and smooth and all appear to be in the right directions. Obviously you could have better topology for animation, but this is all about an automated workflow and speed of use. We can have a quick look at the UV map and see that it's rather disjointed. So fixing any errors on this, fixing any texture errors on this could be challenging unless we're using something like Substance Painter or Marmoset or some of Blender's texture painting tools. We're not gonna look at it, look at that in this tutorial. What we can look at though, is the sculpting features in Blender. And once we go in here and activate symmetry, on the x-axis, we can do things like actually sculpt this or smooth out sections of this and retain the detail of our model. This could be useful if you wanna use this as a base mesh and sculpt like armor or a six pack or something like that here. Here, I think I'm going to go to the inflate and choose deflate and make these arm pads a little bit smaller. And similarly with the head. I would probably use ZBrush for this over Blender. Also, I have noticed some discrepancies with the fingers here, which might, might cause some problems later on when we're rigging. These could probably be repaired by tweaking some of these polygons, but again, I'm not gonna go into the, in the purpose of this tutorial. Once we're done there, we can export and we're ready to bring into Mixamo for rigging. Now, just about everyone in CG has seen Mixamo at some point, and it makes rigging incredibly easy. I can import my FBX, and as it's a, slow, it's a small size, it will upload promptly. 
Once the geometry is here, we can go ahead and pick our various points that we want to use for the auto rigger. I set these, press next, and wait for the magic to happen. Mixamo is probably taking the exact same geometry that we're uploading back into things like Demos for training, so it's an incestuous process probably some way down the line. With that being said, we have a rigged character pretty promptly and ready to go. Albeit, he looks a bit chunky, but I'm happy with that. Let's click next and go. Here, we can add some animations. I am going to go with my favorites, which are the roll. Once I apl apply that animation, I'm gonna export this for use in Unreal. I'm gonna click download and go with skin here. And then I'm gonna add one or two more animations for once again using an Unreal. Let's try the booty dance, one of my other favorites from Mixamo. We can see those flawed fingers, but other than that, everything looks pretty good. Let's download that as well. This time we're gonna go without skin because we already have the skin from the first animation and we're gonna reuse that once we import. Maybe let's get one more. We're gonna use a boxing animation here. Now we're ready to go in Unreal. We need version 5.4.2 because we're gonna be using the retargeting tools that come with this. I'm gonna to go to games, third person, Give my project a name and click on create. From here, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to import my character. Now what I want to import is the very first one, in this case, the dive roll animation, and that will be the largest of your FBXs and everything else will be based off of this skeleton that's going to be imported. Ensure this says none and click import. And you should get your character, a physics asset, and a skeleton. Now, optionally, you can import those animations that you had from Mixamo earlier if you wish to include them. And for this, it should automatically pick the skeleton that I'd imported previously. We're almost ready to go. If I click on this now, we see our character inside Unreal with slightly skewed fists ready to go. But what we're aiming to do is to retarget all the animations that our third person character uses to this new skeletal mesh that we have imported. Go to third person, blueprints, and the third person character and see which animation class your, your uh, character is using in the details section. In this case, it's ABP Quinn underscore C. We can go here and browse to that. And in actual fact, I'm gonna use the ABP Manny here. This is our animation blueprint, and we're going to have a quick tweak at this later on. For now, all we need to do is just right click this and click retarget animations. Here, we will choose our new, skele our new skeleton that we brought in. And we will choose the ABP Manny as our retarget. And when we click export animations, we'll create a folder here to put these in. Then a prefix. And we're good to go by pressing export. This is literally how easy it is to retarget all those animations in bulk in the new version of Unreal. Here, I'm gonna choose the new animation blueprint that we've retargeted. And I'm going to choose our mesh for this. We will compile and then have a look at our character in the idle pose inside the Unreal Editor. In hindsight, I probably should have used another character, but I'll show you how this looks with other characters in a moment. Next, I'm gonna click on this mesh and I'm going to make a material. For this, I am going to simply go back to my content folder and create a new folder for textures and import those textures. And I'm gonna bring all of them in. We also have the PBR texture here and I'll show you how we can use this later on. Once these are all in, we can go here and create a new material by right clicking and going to material, material there. We'll call this M underscore Demos. Here, we're gonna click on this. Somehow our character has got the name Demos and we're gonna bring these four textures in. Now the PBR one that we just saw there, that's basically 
some of these textures packed into a single texture file to save on VRAM and it could be very, very efficient. Although one of the things I have noticed about these is that they are generally very efficient characters. So this could be used in a multitude of platforms, including mobile and desktop and even console. When I hover over these, I know which channels I need to plug these into. So I go ahead and left click and map the metallic, the base color, the normal, and finally the roughness to the appropriate channels. This is a very basic material and we could put some more work into this, but now we can just save this. And when we go back to here again, to where our mesh was, we can apply this material and see for the first time what it looks like with the PBR material applied. Not too bad so far. I'm going to save that and now I'm going to go in and play and see what happens. Press play and there's our character ready to go. Big, clunky and with one major error. As soon as I land, this happens. Now this can be fixed with ease. One of the other things I've noticed is that I'm running on air rather clunkily. Let's see if we can change that too. As mentioned before, we need to go back into that blueprint the animation blueprint and edit. In this case, mine was Demos ABP Mani. I'm gonna go in here and go down the anim graph and the main states and look for land. Here, I'm going to press the Alt key to break these links and use the left mouse button to control, to connect these two together. Then I'll compile that. And I will also find that and that run animation, which is giving me problems here where I've ex retargeted these animations to. Here I'm gonna scroll down and choose on the root motion and in first frame, and then I'm gonna save this and just go back in and play again. And there's our very bulky character straight from AI to third person with all the animations applied. Let's have a bit of fun here now and try maybe one other animation and see how that looks. Now let's have a look at some better characters that I created earlier. So what do I make of it all? Rodin produces quick optimized generic meshes with decent topology that could be used in a variety of games and experiences. Whilst you would expect much better facial features and expressions, clothing and cloth physics, better topology and rigging from a AAA game character, it does prove that for those on a budget and even indie developers, the character equivalent of blocking out can be achieved on a budget with very little skill and talent. I can't see talented character artists disappearing or being out of jobs just yet unless the output of such AI simulations is to improve massively. However, it's a very interesting workflow and the tools that are available to anybody today are so much more powerful than ever before. Thanks for watching, comment and subscribe.